right, so let's talk about the performance. The performance that I do is not something where you just go out there, you grit your teeth, you turn the smoke on, you fly as hard as you can, and uh, do as many fancy tricks as you can. This is actually a real performance. This is one where you put it together, thinking about what the spectators are gonna see and what you can create in that particular location. Every location is different. I have a basic routine that I do that um, I can mix up, add, subtract, put in different maneuvers based on the layout of the airport. But let's start with the equipment that I've got, and that is uh, the aircraft, how loud it is, how much noise it makes, that's important. Uh, also what's important is how much smoke is kicking out of that airplane. I don't have just a small thin line. I like to smoke the place up. I like it to be when I go flying by and there's a huge contrail of smoke coming out of that thing along with that noise, that it leaves an impression right away of, oh my gosh, that's overwhelming. It's almost too much. And that's the impression that I want to leave. So the performance of the aircraft and the sound, uh, the color of the aircraft, bright orange, which shows extremely well in sunlight, in cloud cover, at dusk, um, it doesn't matter, it always shows well. And as I'm turning and rotating, climbing up and spiraling up, and Lucas Oil's name goes by, it just pops. Lucas Oil, Lucas Oil. Because my job is to promote Lucas Oil. So with that being said, the aircraft is the primary tool. Now, what I do with that aircraft at that specific location is different at every single show. We fly over airport shows, right over airport, concrete runways, airport shows. We also fly over water shows. I can think of San Francisco Fleet Week, Toronto, Ocean City, Maryland, Atlantic City, Huntington Beach, Fort Lauderdale, a lot of over water shows. So that performance is gonna be different than over land. But let's look at the land for a moment, looking at the air show over an, a hard surface runway. Before I determine how I'm gonna fly that flight, I actually somewhat walk the line. But I'll go out there, I'll stand um, where the crowd's gonna be, I'll look out at the show site, and I'll start making some determinations. The first thing I wanna really check for is uh, anything that's gonna be in my way, whether it's antennas, for the uh, instrument landing systems, whether it's wind socks, these things stand up 15 to 20 feet in the air. Frankly, when I come down to the surface and I roll upside down, I'm 10 feet off the ground. When I'm right side up, my wheels are probably two feet off the ground. And I'm doing better than 250 miles an hour in some cases. So knowing exactly what the hazards are out there are extremely important. So standing out there and looking down the stage left and stage right, looking for any hazards, looking for anything that would be in my way. What's really funny is even the small piece of steel coming up that was a, like a fence post that may be hidden from the from your eye. I, I've gone down outside of a runway screaming by and all of a sudden I look by me and I see a fence post sticking up that I didn't even know was there. These are the things that you really have to watch out for because that will take a wing out and that will finish me off. And that's the kind of stuff that you really have to be looking for. Now the stage is out here left and right and the crowd line would be a little bit farther to the west just where you saw the pan. And one of the things that I like to do too is I'm looking at the grading or the grade of this, of this uh, land here. And this is a down slope and from here to where I started is probably a four foot drop, three and a half, four feet, which doesn't sound like much. But what's great about it is, is I'm actually able to come out in this location down here. And if I'm doing the maneuver that I call a high alpha, where I bring the airplane up slow, just running right on the wingtip, I'll run a little bit lower out here, two feet, three feet off the grass uh, and parallel uh, this grass line from right to left. Normally I would have to be level with the ground another three or four feet up, but being that this grade comes down, I'm actually coming down lower. When the crowd is looking out, they think that I'm just a few inches off the ground. I'm standing here right now though, and if you look right over here, this is the kind of stuff that will get me. And I'm not kidding you, I'm just seeing this right now. I think I spoke earlier about fence posts. Look at this. That will get me. That is something right there that could uh, totally wipe 
plane out. If I hit it with a landing gear, if I hit it with a wingtip, that would be it. So there's all kinds of hidden hazards that you have to constantly <laughs> walk up and down the line and really look to see what's going on here. So glad I saw that. As for the performance itself, you look at the hazards, you make sure that you know where everything is, and then you start looking at how can you make this performance at this location the best performance possible. Not just by going up and doing my 13 to 15 maneuvers and gritting my teeth, but making it a three-dimensional show where it's away from the crowd, left and right. So by doing that, if you've got trees, trees are good. Trees scare people, trees are good. And you want to be able to use those trees in your show. With the trees, too, what's fun about the trees is the trees may have a line of trees right across the runway over there and they look like they're in the way, but on the other side, there may not be any trees at all. So coming out of a high maneuver to setting down behind the trees, people go, oh, and you scare them. <laughs> not trying to cause heart attacks, but trying to cause memories. Wanting people to go, that guy, went down behind those trees. Oh my gosh, that Lucas Oil airplane? They said Lucas Oil. That's cool, they remember that. And that's what I wanna do, create a memory for Lucas Oil for this to last a long time. The other thing too is you want to be able to keep the performance within a nice visual range. Not to where you fly out of the box, way out there, turn around, they gotta get binoculars and see you. You wanna be able to keep this performance right in front of them all the time and whether it's a three axis to where you go out and up it's all right here and you want that performance to constantly be moving i know what the positive things are about my airplane and one of the things that it does more than anything else is it will roll it will roll fast i can roll 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 keep things going all the time pitch up roll roll you know tumble end over end forward come back down roll no dead spots keeping the pace up all the time and keeping the action going all the time is extremely important. So along with keeping it busy all the time with a lot of things going on, integrating trees, power lines, whatever you've got out there that you can bring in, hills, a slope coming up. In some cases too, when we uh, fly with the Blue Angels at, at a show that the Blue Angels are at, or the Thunderbirds, they may have a bus parked out there as a center marker for the big jet teams or a big white semi. Well, come on, that's perfect. You come screaming down behind that semi, go to a knife edge that behind the semi totally loses it and then you pop out the other side, it's great. So with all of that creativity and keeping the show right within itself, and even adding a third dimension, three-dimensional, to where you're actually going away, and somewhat coming too, but you've gotta be careful about heading towards a crowd with that aircraft, because our rules say that you can't roll inverted or you can't do any aerobatics towards the crowd. You have to be as creative as you can. When you're over water, it's a little tougher. Although most of the shows have a big, huge center boat. And that center boat is usually the Coast Guard or the local water patrol or any, any one of those groups of individuals. And I always look at that center boat as a target. So we use that too. And we actually have the announcer talking about me coming in on that big ship and blowing smoke on them or going behind the ship and right down on the water and getting lost behind it. <clears throat> and in Toronto, there's even a, a large fireboat that kicks out this water all the time. And uh, I use that as part of, uh, integrate that in my show also. And I'll end up going, flying through some of that water and get wet and stuff like that. But it, again, it's being creative. It's causing, uh, it causes everyone to stop. They wanna watch this one. This guy's crazy. This is cool. I, it, it's not what these other people are doing. So it's creating the desire to, really grab a hold of this and watch this show and creating a memory and that's and that's what I love to do. So it's not just going out and flying left to right, up and down, making a little noise and gritting your teeth. This is actually for each particular show coming up with a plan to be able to fly this show and make it so that 
these people remember, this audience remembers, that Lucas Oil air show pilot, that Lucas Oil airplane, and uh, walking away going, I've never seen an airplane do that before. I've never seen a pilot fly like that before. I mean, what's not to love about this? I love what I do, and uh, I love putting on a good performance. So creating that performance, creating that memory, that, that people will come watch the air show and they'll go, golly, you remember that, that orange biplane that said Lucas? You remember that guy? That guy was crazy. I want them to remember Lucas Oil, and uh, I want them to be intrigued with the idea that, man, never thought an airplane could do that. That's what I love.